Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to address something really simple is how to resize images in Photoshop. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you there's different ways of resizing images to get different results depending on what kind of an image that you're trying to resize. So for those of you who are a little confused about resolution and stuff like that, I'm going to clear that up. I'm going to make this as simple as I can without getting too technical. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get the best results every single time inside of Photoshop. Before I do anything, let me just tell you, here's a little piece that I've created. Notice it's a flattened image. And I've done this because I've got gradients, I've got fine lines, I've got curved fine lines type, and a photo in there. So this is kind of purposefully put together to test different types of graphic and image types as we resize them. And of course, you can download this from photoshopcafe.com and I'll give you the link underneath. You can just grab this image and experiment for yourself. Let's talk about resizing the images. Let's go up under here. Let's look at image image size. And you can see it's a 1200 by, you know, a thousand more or less pixels. That is how big this image is. Okay. So at 300 pixels prints, you could print this at four by three and it would look good. Go any bigger than that you start to lose quality. So here's a rule of thumb. You can scale images down, but you can't really scale them up. Now, when I say you can't scale them up, you can scale them up a little bit. You can get away with 10 or 20%. And in a jam, you can go further. Well, let's have a look at that right now. I go to image size. This is how we resize the images here inside of Photoshop. Now, if you're using uh, CS6 or earlier, you're gonna have this kind of dialog box. If you're using CC, you can actually click and drag and let's just take this full screen and then we can get a preview so we don't have to actually size to see what it's going to look like. So this is the image size dialog box. Now here's the thing. If you want to change the resolution on here, you turn off resample and you can make that 72 and notice it's not changing the dimensions. That's the important thing. So really how big is this image? It's 1259 by 932. All right, so this is how you size it here, you know, as far as, you know, preparing it. Like, I want it 300. Okay, there it is at 300. Hasn't changed anything. All it's doing is just changing the metadata. Now, if you want to resize the image or make it a different size, turn on resample. And now here's the thing. When you turn on resample, see this little chain link? If you click that, now the width and height are going to change together. If you wanted to change just the width or just the height independently, turn the chain link off. But we're going to turn it on right now and we're going to resize it. Okay, so here's the thing about resizing. It, where it says resample, you'll see all these different things here. Those are called interpolation, and we're gonna look at those in a second, but we don't have to worry about them scientifically. There's basically two in there that really matter. All right, so let's have a look. So say we're gonna double the size of this. We're gonna increase it. Okay, so this might be getting a little carried away, but here we go. We're looking at it eight, and if we look at it automatic, it's not bad, right? So here's what we're getting here. Here's our line art. Here's our gradient. It's not bad. Uh, here's our type. It's not bad. And here's our photo. Now, if you click, this is what it looks like without any interpolation. Interpolation is a way that Photoshop calculates resizing it. If I let go, this is what it's going to look like on automatic. So my guess is the automatic is it's just going to choose one of these. It's probably going to grab this first one, preserve details. Yep. And notice with the preserved details, the photo looks a little, you know, we can see some halos and stuff around the edges. Um, it's trying to kind of give it a little bit of, uh, you know, crispness and try and maintain that. However, if we go to something like a by cubic smoother, notice it looks better for the photos, at least in my opinion. You can always sharpen it later, but you're not getting the halos as badly around the edges. So if we look at this, let's compare it. There's the details. Yes, it looks sharper, but it also looks a little crunchy. In this case, it looks better for the photo. It looks smoother. And let's have a look at things like the gradient up here. See, there's a gradient there. If we choose this gradient with details, looks a little crunchy, but here it's smoother. Now, there's other things to look at, like the line art, for example. If we're working with things like line art and type and these kind of things, like look at the lines there. That's using the smoother, but if we go to the details, notice how nice and crisp and sharp that is. So that's going to work better for that. So let's talk about the different types of uh, uh, interpolation. So originally there was three. 
nearest neighbor, which is the lowest form. And you can see that's very harsh. But if you've got like dotted stippled artwork and things like that, um, some hand drawn line art, sometimes that will actually give you the best result, but not very often. By linear though, this is the this used to be our go to baby when we were working with a line art, you know, when it was just the three. And uh, and it does work well with the line art. And then by cubic is where it smoothens things or softens them a little bit. And you can see, you know, here it does look a little smoother, but we are losing some of the detail just depending on how, you know, how fine the line art is. So these used to be the three that we would work with. And you can see the bicubic always looks better for the photos. So there's the nearest neighbor, bilinear. Um, and then we go to the bicubic, boom, looks better for the photos. Then what was added was two more, bicubic smoother and bicubic sharper. Bicubic smoother, what it does is it smoothens it out when we go larger. So you don't get pixelization. Pixelization is if I click here, you can see the edges. See the edge of that hat there? See the little jaggies? That reduces those jaggies. Now there's two things you don't want in your photograph is jaggies and halos. So you wanna kind of avoid those if you can. If we go here to the sharpener by Cubic Sharper, it actually makes it look sharper, but this is more for reduction. Because what happens is when you reduce it less than 100%, things can get a little soft and condensed sometimes. The newer one that was added is preserved details and preserved details can look really good on the photo depending. If you've got an area here where we've got like high contrast here, sometimes you can get those little halos there that don't look so good. So if you kind of look, see how it's just kind of crunchy and these weird artifacts, we can actually go in here and we can smoothen out those, those artifacts. So if we look at this all the way up versus all the way down, kind of see it, you know, in here, notice some of the weird weirdness going on in the face. You can actually bring this up a little bit and smoothing things out and sometimes the smoother can look better once again as i mentioned for this kind of work line art and things like that fine lines preserve details boom it's crisp it's sharp looks much better for those type of graphics drop this down to say two so we're going to shrink this puppy all the way down if we go to the sharper notice here look at the um, type Look at these lines up here, the gradient, and look at the photograph. So let's just compare this. So if we go to say a bicubic smoother, see how things are looking kind of soft, and we're losing some of the definition. Then when we go to bicubic sharper, boom, you can particularly see those lines there. It kind of keeps that definition. Now, if we go to the automatic, I'm mean, the automatic just kind of is gonna choose the <laughs> preserve details for enlarger and the bicubic sharper for reducing the size of it. So these are the things that really matter. If you're increasing the size, at least from what I've seen, uh, preserve details works really well on line art, graphics, things like that. Sometimes for photos, it can make it too crunchy, add too much of an artifact. And then of course, bicubic smoother will give you a smoother result. And of course, if you wanted to do it, to apply it, you just click OK. And now you have this huge image. Of course, I can hit Control-1, we'll go to 100%. Control-0 or Command-0 will show it to you full screen. And if we look over here, we go Image Size, and you can see it at the bottom anyway. But now that we've resized it, we can see now we've got this 4,000 by 3,000. Let's have a look at a couple of little tricks too, which can save you time uh, when it comes to resizing. So say we've got this image and we want to fit it within a certain size. We can actually go up here and maybe we're working on an eight and a half by 11 and we can just choose this eight and a half by 11, boom. And what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna make it fit, let me zoom this out, the best it can with on that sheet. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna go eight and a half by 8.4. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna resize it to fit the best we could on there. So we could change this, you know, to a bicubic smoother or whatever, but notice when we're looking up here, we're not really getting an accurate representation. There's another thing that's important, you have to go to 100% to see what it's gonna look like. If you're not viewing it at 100%, there we go, see? That's exactly what you're gonna get. So that's very, very important to do that. My anyway, guys, I know this was a lot of stuff and I apologize if this was, uh, you know, a lot of theory, but I think this is something that a lot of people need to know. Um, it will help you preserve the quality of your images. And I've noticed a lot of people 
you know, they're working and their images can kind of look soft and stuff like this. So what I just showed you is kind of a little bit of a key to keeping those images nice and clean and sharp and crisp. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, hit the subscribe button, become part of the cafe crew. And every week I have a new tutorial on Photoshop and Lightroom, different gadgets and reviews. And add a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, next week, I guarantee, I promise you, we're going to do something a little bit more fun and creative. And until then, I will see you at the cafe.